Hello little buns, it is Steph, welcome back to my home. I, you know, been, I've been here. I've been here, I've been out here. I've been getting so many emails since my last Q&A video where I featured your faces asking me questions instead of just your text. I've been getting so many emails of more faces asking me questions, more of your beautiful faces, more little buns here to, you know, pull from my wisdom. And we're gonna do some more today. So I have a set of seven questions to answer for you, and we're just gonna jump right in. If you at any point in the video have a question for me for a future Q&A video, you can find my business email address in the description box. Just send your video asking the question to that email with somewhere in the subject line, it's saying Q and A, and you may appear in the next video. Thank y'all. We are going to jump right in here with the first question. Hi Steph, I was wondering if you could make another Cooking with Nana videos. It was so funny and I would love to see another one. So many other people would too. Please keep being the wonderful person you are and making awesome videos. I would love to do another Cooking with Nana video. So actually that character I didn't call Nana, but it makes perfect sense to call her Nana. The reason Nana was in the title of that video is because I was making a recipe that my Nana, my grandmother, taught me, kind of. It's just passed down from that side of the family. But now that I think about it, her name should be Nana. And she shouldn't be a grandmother, but her name should just be Nana inexplicably. Inexplicably. I will definitely do more cooking videos, perhaps, under the influence, just like that one. Um, we will see. We will see. I really had fun doing that, so I will keep an eye out for future opportunities, I promise. Hey, Steph. I'm Gwen. No pronoun preference. My question is about HRT. Because I'm a voice actor and singer. I've got a couple songs on YouTube. I really like my voice. I love the way my voice sounds so much. But I know that if I take testosterone, then my voice is going to change. While I want the other things that come with the testosterone, I really, really don't want my voice to change. So I guess, do you know anybody else in this situation? Or if not, do you at least have any tips? Thank you. I love you so much. Bye. This is a very good and very tricky question. I obviously cannot tell you what to do, or I, I'm not even comfortable advising you on what to do. And I am not familiar with anybody of a similar experience. I'm sure there are people though, so if anybody is watching and you are also a voice actor or a singer or you love your voice how it is and you're worried about testosterone changing it, but you really need to go on HRT for your mental health, you know, let's start a dialogue in the comments. Let's talk about that. I will tell you, you know, from experience of being assigned male at birth and having, you know, going from testosterone to estrogen, you can train your voice to sound however you really want to, but of course it's, it's unlikely you can train it to sound just like it did before testosterone. So, you know, that's all I know, but I know that, you know, you might end up falling in love with your new voice. You might love how it sounds. You might love how it changes. Because honestly, you could, I mean, I'm not a singer. I don't have intense, you know, biblical knowledge of vocal anatomy and strength. I, I have limited knowledge knowing how to train my voice speaking. But, you know, maybe you'll love the depth that you gain. Maybe you'll love the richness you gain. I know you love your voice how it is, and it has a beautiful tone to it, your speaking voice. But you never know if you might love your other voice too. You never know. So I cannot advise you on this, but if anybody has similar experiences, let me know in the comments. Let's talk about this a little bit. Years. Hi Steph, I'm Ashton and I'm a trans guy. I've been out with trans for almost three years now, but a lot of my like childhood friends are just starting to realize per se that I am trans and or that it wasn't a phase. It sucks because so many of the people that I grew up with are effectively disowning me. I threw a pool party, you know, for graduating grade school years ago, and now the kid that I threw that with sent me a death threat. I try to teach these people things, like I really, really do, but sometimes they're just so vehemently hateful. Is it wrong to block them out of my life? Am I doing a bad thing by giving up on them and deciding that they aren't worth my time and my effort? Thank you, I love you. So this question actually I relate to a lot because when I first came out when I was in high school I didn't come out as trans because I didn't understand that's what I was um, But I pretty much looked like a young trans girl I lost all of my friends that I had at the time and I had to sort of form new friendships But you know back then when I thought I was gay I had to give up on trying to convince them that there was nothing wrong with me and that they could be my friend and nothing would happen. There was this big culture where I came from of, you know, if you're friends with the gay person, you must be gay. And that sucked. So, I mean, I'm sure now if I was to come out as trans and I was 13 or 14, they'd be like, well, if you're friends with the trans person, you must be fucking them and that's weird, or you must be trans, or you must be gay. And it's just, 
not a good not a good culture and it's unfortunate but you know what if if taking care of yourself means you have to cut yourself off from people that are not willing to listen to you that's what you've got to do do not feel guilty for taking care of yourself do not feel guilty for putting your feelings first because ultimately that's what you're trying to do by teaching these people is you know maybe make it easier for other trans folks but also you don't want to lose your friendships and you don't want to lose you know everything that you have right now in your life but if if your happiness means you have to let them go you've got to let them go and I know that's a scary thought but you are not a bad person and it is not a bad thing if you give up on trying to teach somebody something because you've obviously tried obviously you have tried but you're not obligated to improve their life you're only obligated to improve yours right so keep that in mind hi Steph my name's Leo I use he him pronouns and I was wondering what do you do when part of you doesn't completely pass or whatever for instance my chest is too large so even when i bind it's still there's still a bump so yeah i was just wondering what your opinion is so what do i do if a certain aspect of my body does not pass i i have a lot of trouble with this concept of passing and i think i can tell that you do too because of the air quotes um i do not believe a trans person has to emulate the way a cis person looks to be deserving of respect of course of course but you know in the interest of living in this culture that we live in right now, of course passing is typically in your best interest. What do I do if a certain part of my body doesn't show? Okay, so I mean, I try to change it. I am a very much a believer of, you know, we make our own destiny, we forge our own self, you know, if something is not to your liking, you can change it. And of course not everybody has access to resources to change it, but there are ways you can work towards that, and even if it may not be accessible, it might make you feel better to be working towards a change in your body that makes you feel better. And I'm not saying, you know, if somebody says, you know, you have small shoulders for you to make yourself sick trying to grow shoulders like with muscle mass and stuff I'm not saying do something for other people but if there's something on your body that you feel dysphoric about I I you know when I work towards those changes I feel better and I notice the results too for instance my neck and shoulders have reduced a lot in size lately and I feel good about that because I've done something to make that happen. Now, if it's something where it doesn't necessarily pass, but you don't mind the feature, do not change it for anybody else. You know, if it's a matter of having a large chest and when you go in public, people don't treat you well. If it's warm, if it's, if it's a cooler, cooler day, maybe wear a big hoodie. Like, I don't, I'm not advocating hiding your body or hiding behind clothing, because that's not a very healthy way to live. But, you know, if it's for your safety, you gotta do what you gotta do. And, um, you know, if you love your body, but other people don't, that's their problem, not yours. You know what I mean? But if you are having, you know, body image issues and you don't like the way your body looks, I'm not saying, you know, work towards it by paying money to get it, but I'm saying, you know, think of a, create a strategy of, you know, if I do this, I'll be working towards this goal and that will make me feel better. You know, working towards a goal can make us feel so much better sometimes than just sitting there and wishing it wasn't so. And I'm, I'm speaking from a privileged place and I know that not everybody has access or can do these things, but if you are able to create a plan or a strategy or do anything to, you know, work towards a goal of yours in terms of body, uh, why not? You know, why not start? Hi Steph, as a fellow Canadian, what's your favorite thing to do in Toronto? Love you so much. Oh my god, you look so Canadian. I love that. I love that so much. Look at all the sweaters, the knit, the antlers. I. This is Canada. This is Canadian culture. So is genocide and the erasure of uh, indigenous folks, but also knitted sweaters. What is my favorite thing to do in Toronto? I love checking out the new exhibits at the ROM and at the AGO. Uh, you know, when they come through with new exhibits, that's the Royal Ontario Museum and the Art Gallery of Ontario. So, you know, you've got your historical and your archaeological shit, you got your art shit. I think it's very fun. I love wandering around the distillery district, checking out the galleries there. I love drinking expensive coffee or fancy coffee. I really love coffee. There's something so comforting and so warm and so wonderful about a good cup of coffee. Maybe I'm addicted to caffeine, but that's just, you know, say la vie, whatever. I also love wandering around Queen Street West. I don't think it's technically the fashion district, but I consider it to be the fashion district because it's so full of culture and vibrancy and all these little independent businesses. And I think it's a very, very cool atmosphere. So, you know, you don't even have to spend money in Toronto to have a good time because frankly, the cost of living here is insane. So if you don't have money to spend on leisure and recreation, it's as simple as wandering around these cool districts in the city and just experiencing the culture. Another great example would be Trinity Bellwoods Park during the day. I love taking like a big blanket out there, laying it on the grass and just reading a book. That can be so, so, so nice and so therapeutic and just so relaxing. And it feels like you're in the middle of the woods, but you're in the middle of the city. And I just think that's really cool. And I really, really value that. Hi, Bird Mom. I have one question that is, in general, what color is your favorite color to see on people's hair, on your hair, makeup, you know, what's your favorite, like, cosmetic color? Love you.
favorite cosmetic color on a person? So this is going to be a tricky answer, and it's not going to be the answer you necessarily want to hear. But I don't have a color that, you know, I'm like, oh, I love it when this when people just wear this color on their body. I really love seeing people wear colors and seeing them confident, no matter what that color is. So if somebody, if I know somebody, for example, and they've had, you know, dark brown, blackish hair for their entire time that I've known them, and then they suddenly switch to like a gingery red, and you can see their themselves like just kind of blossom and, and you know their personality really come to the surface and they look more comfortable and more confident and, and the way they carry themselves has changed. That to me is incredible. That to me is the most valuable thing in the world and that's why I think beauty and art and all these things are so powerful because they can be so transformative on a person. That's why you know I really have an issue when people say oh like clothes or fashion or whatever is so shallow. Because, you know, it, it is surface, of course, but the surface can very much run deep, you know what I mean? So there is no specific color, but in my opinion, the best results or the most fashionable thing you can do is to express yourself 100%. Don't follow the trend, do not follow what somebody says is a good color, you know? Find what color you love, plaster yourself with it, and say this is the fucking color, you know? This is the shit. And people will be like, damn, that's impressive. You know, if you rock something, if you feel confident and you feel beautiful, or you feel handsome and whatever, if you feel great in something, people are going to know, they're going to pick up on that. And they're going to be like, that person feels great. And that energy that you're carrying with you is going to just be passed around the group. And people are going to love to be around you because you're putting out this great energy. And I know that's a lot deeper of an answer than you were looking for. Um, also red is my favorite color. Hi Steph, I'm Haley. I have two questions for you if you don't mind answering them. One is, how do you think your outward appearance has changed some of your mannerisms, if any, and like maybe things like your speech and things like that? And also, what are some things that you do to help you feel more feminine on some days? Thanks. I love you, bread mom. Bye. Okay, this one's also going to be a very involved answer. So how do I think my outward appearance has affected the way I carry myself, for example? Um, huge, 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 huge. This relates back to what I just said in the last answer, where I, you know, I believe there is so much power and an energy in in crafting the way you look to reflect the way you feel. And I can tell you 100% that, you know, since my facial feminization surgery, or even since I went brunette, like to my natural hair colors, or even when I decide to wear less makeup, all of these things that I do are conscious decisions that I make. It's not like I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna do this instead. I think about everything I do. I put a lot of intent into everything I do. So if I'm like, I'm gonna wear less makeup, it's because I'm trying to learn to love my eye shape or I'm trying to learn to love my face without contour. I'm trying to actively do something with every single thing I put on my body. I chose this hoodie because I want it to look aloof and comfy and trendy. I put my hair behind my back because I wanna look casual. You know, it's all, every, I think about everything that I do and it, it can be as simple as changing the way my hair is sitting on my body and that can change the way I carry myself because I feel like I did that because I want to look this way so therefore I act that way you know what I mean holy shit oh my god um, but in general in terms of transitioning changes like you know physical changes in my transition that has vastly improved my mental health and I much I have a much easier time communicating and being social and and expressing my feelings and not even just like talking about them but visibly on my expressions you can tell more how I'm feeling um, I'm just less reserved and less shy I'm gonna show you a picture of when I was a kid um, when I was 12 or 13 years old and I was 100% incapable of showing emotion I was incapable of really even feeling below the surface and I was incapable of looking people in the eye I was incapable of talking to strangers I couldn't even order my food at restaurants back then I had my mom do it for me I would take a drink a really long drink while my mom ordered my food so it looked like I was drinking and she just ordered it because I was busy like I had so much focus put on avoiding social interaction and human interaction and transitioning is what has made it so much easier for me. I have gone from a 100% introvert to a 100% extrovert and that is a bizarre change for me to experience and I still struggle with it because I feel like I should be more reserved but in reality I'm not and it's just weird. It's a weird feeling. As far as when I'm not feeling feminine, I have, I believe, very good advice for this. So um, whether it's that you're not feeling feminine enough or not feeling masculine enough, what it comes down to is changing something about your appearance or you know, putting on a lipstick, for example, it's not going to make you feel any different. Of course, like I said, with changing your appearance can have power, right? To an extent, but you know, if I'm feeling really at my core that day that I just do not feel good. I don't feel like myself, something's wrong, something's in the air, something's up with the planets, whatever. I take some time to reflect. I think about what femininity is and I realize that 
changing the way my hair looks or you know changing my appearance of course does have immediate change and immediate effect and immediate power but it doesn't change anything conceptual it doesn't you know make me feminine all of a sudden because in reality if I'm a woman whether I am a butch lesbian or a super feminine you know cis straight woman both of those are femininity you know what I mean? Both of those are femininity. And you know, you can say that there's a balance of masculinity and femininity in every person and you can use that to justify it. Or you can say that femininity can be anything and masculinity can be anything. So you don't have to have a balance, but you know, either way you think about that I think is healthy. But you know, thinking that, you know, there are both in every person you have to eradicate the other is dangerous and is not healthy and is not going to make you feel good. So what I do is I tell myself and I and I, you know, I don't even convince myself, but I just understand that femininity can be anything that I am putting out there because I am a feminine soul, I'm a feminine person. So if I decide to wear no makeup and not tuck and wear a big raggedy t-shirt and sit and eat and watch Netflix for 12 hours straight, what I'm doing is feminine because I am feminine, you understand? So I try not to focus so much on changing myself to make myself feel better, but just acknowledging that what I'm doing is fine. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of peace that comes with that, and it can take some time to get there, but hey, whatever. That is all the questions I have to answer for you today. If you would like to submit a question for the next Q&A video, please check out my email address in the description box, send a video of you asking the question. Try to keep it under a minute long, and um, I do apologize, but I'm trying not to answer any more text-based questions because it does feel so much more personal when I, fe when I see your face and when I hear your voice, and I really love that. It makes me feel more connected to you. And I'm trying to feel that more, you know what I mean? I want to see your beautiful faces. If you have any thoughts on any of the answers or the questions that I, you know, brought forth today, please, you know, let's have a dialogue in the description, in, in the description, in the comments. Yeah, please log into my YouTube account and change the descriptions with like a full string of comments. Don't do that. Um, one of the things I love about this community that we have here is that we can have these conversations and we can talk about, you know, helping each other and offering advice about our own experiences that can help inform somebody else's experience. I always love seeing your constructive conversations conversations in the comments makes my day. I love you so much. Until next time, just remember, you can craft your own place in this world. You can make your own space. You are who you are and nobody can take that away from you. You know, if you need to take some time to reflect on your life and who you are as a person, take that time. Even if it's 10 minutes, it doesn't have to be an hour, it doesn't have to be a day. Take that time and just think about all the things that make you you and how those are constant. Those are never going to change. I will see you later. Love you so much. Bye.